Showtime Sean Porter, Adrian the Problem Broner, going down June 20th, like I told you, we were going to do a lineup where we match the fighters up, give you the intangibles, and break the fight down, round by round. My name is Eric Bradley, aka The Fight Doctor, and I thank you guys for watching, because right now you're watching Master Boxing. And I said I was going to get you guys a fight matchup and break it down in increments. Make sure you go up there and see the physical components of the way I broke the fight down. Adrian Broner versus Showtime Sean Porter. I did it today, June 4th. Make sure you check that post. Subscribe to the channel. Here we go. Round one, the matchup. Sean Porter is more of a brawler, used to be more skilled boxer. Now, once he's reached more, he's closer to the pinnacle, fighters are better. You can't bully these guys. These guys are tough. Adrian Broner was bullied against Marcos Chino Maidana. He was bullied in the ring. But most of you forgot that he came back on later in that fight. Why? Because he is of uh, the A or B minus, but he has an A night every once in a while. And he's definitely proven that he can fight because anybody else, I, I have no other fighter that I can think of. Maybe uh, Sugar Shane Mosley, someone like that, someone who's tough at interior and exterior would have survived that night. But Marcos Maidana was hitting him with everything, including the kitchen sink pipes. So you think about it, Adrian Broner matched up against him. When it comes down to a fight, people, the person who can get their weapon off first is going to win the fight nine times out of ten, unless there is a severe knockout unexpectedly. All right, well, the best jab goes to Adrian Broner. All right, the guy who understands ring distance has a better chance of winning as well. Adrian Broner, he understands where to be in the ring. He knows how to throw the punch, the jab hook, step around. He's using his legs these days. Sean Porter smothers his punches when he gets inside, so he won't have too much of an effective inside fight. Um, let me see. All these points are going to be valid. He has a lot of power. He knows how to bully in the ring. Adrian Broner is not going to be bullied in the ring again. He's been training on the East Coast now. He's been fighting against some of the top fighters in the game, training, sparring over here at Barry Hunter's gym up in D.C. And like I told you on prior posts before, on the East Coast, it's a dog pound, period. The real dog pound started over here. And it's a reason why if you travel over here to the East Coast, you know, f fighters all have a lot of the same characteristics. Uh, more poverty, the deeper the dog inside of a fighter. So when you come over here and you go to places like Baltimore, and if you don't know what Baltimore is, look it up on the map. Then you got Philadelphia. You look at these cities and you drive through them and it's poverty stricken. And I mean, zombies walk in the street. Everybody says that, but in certain areas, it's just different. You know, a lot of you guys complain when you're living in the hood, but go to Africa. Go to a third world country. You won't be complaining. The hood is like a castle. I mean, you have hot water, cold water, you know, electricity, refrigeration. These people don't have refrigeration. They don't drink cold water. It's, it's, it's absolutely asinine the way they have to live in third world countries. So, like I said, when you come over and you fight, and that's one of the reasons Adrian Broner's conditioning and his legs are better because he's fighting where dogs fight. He's ready to fight in the trenches. He's tough now. He's a lot tougher, and he knows it. And that's one of the quotes he made after, after his last fight. I'm not going to have another tough fight because he can fight or he can box, and he's chosen to box. He's going to keep him out there. He's going to keep him out there as often as possible at the end of his jab and shooting that straight right, that lead right down the pipe. He's going to slide out. Um, Sean Porter is going to get frustrated. Now, you know that's going to happen because he's going to press and press and press. But Adrian Broner will be conditioned enough, and that's the key component. Um, you think about Sean Porter, hard hooks, 
left hand, right hand, but he fights so short that he'll be right in the line of the fire of Adrian Broner. And let's not mention Adrian Broner's accuracy. And Sean Porter is not the most accurate fighter because he fights in a bully style. So you see I'm making these points and they're valid points and you were confused before, but as you're watching this post, you're getting less and less confused because it's all making sense. Now, Sean Porter said he can do this, he can do that, but you're doing that in training camp. And remember, I already know what this guy does in camp. I see a lot of the tricks that you try to apply, but those tricks don't always come to fruition on fight night. It's things that you're learning and you're getting better at certain things, but a fighter only gets so much better, especially after being in the fight game, as long as this guy's already been in the fight game. And I, like I said, I wanted to break the fight down and give you the intangibles. Like I said, jab goes to Adrian Broner. Uh, power goes to Sean Porter, but power without accuracy is a problem. He was controlled in the ring by Kell Brook. The fight that um, Adrian Broner had against Marcos Maidana prepped him for beating John Molina and is going to prep him to fight against Sean Porter. And like I said, some fighters are meant to continuously get better. They learn their lesson. Some fighters are going to only be as good as they are going to get. You know, so, you know, that was my fight semi prediction. It's kind of like a lineup. So I line up all their intangibles. Ring generalship is important. Spacing, jab, all of these qualities are going to matter. Now, punch output is going to be vital and pressure. So, like I said, I'm not going to be worried with this. I'm going to start cutting these things down so I know you can see the entire post because I always keep something very flavorable at the end and I want you guys to always get that. So, like I said before, with the intangibles, you have a better chance at making a better prediction for this fight. They call me the fight doctor. And I thank you guys for watching. You know me as Master Boxing. And this is where we break the fight world down. And we break it down round by round. Always feel free to go out to our website too. It's very entertaining. We keep the fights up there in full capacity. You can go out there and check out your fights. Entertain yourself. And hang and chop it up out there with us. The Fight Doctor out there at MasterBoxingLLC.com. Like I said, and if you don't like just watching boxing, you want to be boxing, you got that boxing workout training as well. We get it in all the way around at Master Boxing. Peace. Porter. Broner. Ta.